Hello and welcome to Audio Architects. My name's Mike, and today I'm gonna to be doing an in-depth review on the 35 XTIs by Martin Logan. Let's roll. So one of the first things I did after auditioning the speakers in my area was to look through all the other reviews out there to see what my colleagues are saying about these speakers. This made me realize that a reviewer's opinion is only as strong as the source and amplification they are using as well as their subjective opinion in direct relation to their personal preference of sound. So I'm going to give you the best unbiased opinion using the best possible equipment to make these babies really sing. Amplifying the Logans will be my Stark 84 which provides 320 watts of Class D power. Utilize Using high quality interconnects from Audience AV and a Blue Sound Node 2i as a source using my favorite streaming service, Tidal. Let's talk aesthetics. The ones I received are a gorgeous gloss black finish on the cabinet, a cool to the touch matte black finish for the front baffle, the bass driver uses an aluminum cone with a raised concave dust cap, and a rather large AMT tweeter to provide the mids and highs, which is elegant and adds the final touch to this total package of the design. Concealing the speaker and tweeter is an unbranded magnetic grill. Martin Logan has always been known for their elegance and class since their early beginnings. The build quality is sturdy, not too heavy, but not as light as other speakers of the same size or even bigger that I have reviewed. They are in fact considerably bigger than the 59s since the 35 XTIs come with a 6.5 inch driver as opposed to the 5.25 on the 59s. The rear of the speaker offers a 5 way binding post allowing you to buy wire, however I tried it both ways and did not hear an audible difference so to keep it simple I would just suggest using the jumpers provided and going with one set of speaker cables. The flared base port is mounted in the back and is quite large, with a depth of 7 inches and an overall diameter of 2.5 inches. This was a highlight when testing the bass response later in the video. The precision of the soundstage was fantastic. It wasn't super wide, however it covered my listening area very well. As I mentioned in my intro to hi-fi video, I like a V-curve, and the low end combined with the warmth of the high end provided me with a beautiful V-curve, however still maintaining proper clarity in the mid-range. The level of detail from the AMT tweeters was present and excelled with every genre of music I put in its path. The low end bass was surprisingly deep and punchy despite that being the only limitation of its smaller brother, the 15 eyes. While testing, I didn't even use my subwoofer. I was pleased with the low end. However, when taken to higher volumes, the woofers did bottom out when faced with really low frequencies. So to make sure the full spectrum of sound is covered, I would encourage everyone to always use a subwoofer when listening to stand mount speakers. Here's the room measurement I did. As you can see, they are a bit bassy in the mid bass range between 60 hertz and 100 hertz but they stay fairly linear throughout and have a bit of a kick at the end with the red curve that is actually how i listen to music i left the tone controls alone so that way you can kind of see how i like to listen to music now the green is going to be a complete flat response so as you can see they're still a little bassy on that mid bass range they start to fall off at about 60 hertz and then just go down from there on the top ends of ground fall off all the way to 20,000 kilohertz. Overall, I really like this measurement because it is quite linear and it does have a little bit of punch. So I liked it. I enjoyed it. That mid bass came in very handy when I was listening to a lot of acoustic tracks that have some low end instruments involved. Overall, it was a really nice measurement. So overall, I really enjoyed these speakers. Between their appearance, 
the sound, and overall performance, I'd say they're very well balanced and have a lot of value for the price. They come in at about $1,200 for the pair. On my rating scale, I'm gonna give them a four out of five. Now, if you're interested in seeing more about these speakers, I'm gonna be doing a written review on my website, audioarchitects.com. I wanna give a huge thanks to Andrew from Martin Logan for providing me not only with these speakers, but with a lot of cool Martin Logan stuff to review. You guys have been an awesome support for the channel, and I really do appreciate it. I'll go ahead and put links in the description below of all the previous videos I've done about Martin Logan gear. Thanks again for watching, and if you enjoyed the content, definitely subscribe to the channel, smash that like button if you enjoy the video, and ring the bell to get notified every time I put out new content. Thanks, and have a wonderful holiday season. Thank <laughs> you.